on the breakfast. Candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Atiku Abokar, has filed a petition to challenge the declaration of Bola Tirubu of the of Progressives Congress as winner of the 25 February 2023 presidential election. We'll look at the background and expectations of this petition. Also on the breakfast, the Central Bank of Nigeria has increased the interest rate by 50 basis point. What does this mean for Nigerians and the economy? Stay with us for more information. And of course, we have our usual take and look at the stories on the front pages of today's national dailies. We call it Off the Press. Stay with us. It's a beautiful Thursday morning, reaching you live from our studios right here on Victoria Island, Lagos. My name is Kofi Bartels. You're welcome. My name is Messi Bukwo, and thank you for joining us this morning on The Breakfast. Right. Uh, of course, the earlier advertised conversations uh, will come your way, and we can't wait to have our guests do justice to those very important topics. But as usual, we'll start with a look at what's trending uh, on the social space. The first one up, uh, we have a look at... Um, protests around the country uh, regarding the results of the governorship elections held on the 18th of March 2023. We've seen protests in Abia State, we've seen protests in Ogun State, and of course the uh, latest one to talk about is Nasarawa State where women, uh, a group of women came out to protest the election result. In a show of discontent, uh, we had thousands, women numbering in their thousands, uh, dressed in black, uh, took to the streets of Nasarawa uh, to protest the uh, declaration of Governor Abdullahi Sule as winner of the March 18 governorship election. Now, the protesters marched to the headquarters of the Independent National Electoral Commission in Lafia, uh, the Nasarawa state capital, on Tuesday, demanding uh, that the commission reverse its earlier pronouncement and return uh, their candidate. Okay, they allege that the election results were manipulated by the Independent National Electoral Commission in favor of the incumbent governor with a margin of 62,000 votes, separating him from his closest rival, David Obu, Ombugadu rather, of the People's Democratic Party. Um, that's what they're saying. And the leader of the protesters, uh, Honorable Stella Innocent Oboshi, uh, emphasized uh, that they will not rest until their mandate is returned to them, citing what they believe to be irregularities in that election. Uh, the protest, however, was peaceful, with security personnel present to maintain order. So a bit different from what you saw in Ogun State, where uh, trigger-happy civil defense officer fired a, a, a gunshot, live fire, a live ammunition into the air in a bid uh, to disperse the crowd. Well, um, it's uh, quite unfortunate that we have uh, this protest rocking some parts of the country as regards the outcome of the elections. But however, uh, like I rightly mentioned, when we talked about this conversation yesterday, whether or not the people should engage in protests, I mean, engaging in protests, is, it's within, I mean, it's a tool that's been used, you know, to demand policy change. But, you know, this is an election. Results have been declared. I hear this women... Uh, not going to relent their hope to you know continue every day go to the office you know of the uh, you know the INEC office at the state level until they have an audience but really what can happen uh, will there be a change of the figures uh, will INEC just be working with this uh, saying oh our mandates have been stolen and what have you I mean these are real questions you need to ask however uh, it, it was expected that, you know, within the period of elections that's been conducted, the procedure according to the Electoral Act is that there should be an administrative review of the result. I mean, within a certain period of seven days or thereabout, uh, all of the complaints and challenges should have been taken into consideration. And, uh, you know, I actually take a decision. And, and so, like it is now, I think that... Um, as much as we say it's fine to protest, as long as you're not constituting uh, a threat to national peace and security, but you also want to ask yourself, 
uh, how much of a result are you getting from the protest? So even if you say you will continue to stay at the office of INEC, it's not going to change anything. And that's a bitter truth because I don't think that INEC would begin to change the figures because of your protest. And so what are the means do you have to engage? Do you need to ap approach you know, the tribunal? Um, is there a case that the evidence is to prove? Because that's what it is. And that's why people were bent on the fact that INEC shouldn't have gone ahead, especially when all of these complaints were being lodged at the collation center. Because if you lost it at the collation center, then I think that the audit time that you have is almost going to court, uh, you know, approaching the uh, tribunal. But that's not something, not to say that, again, I mentioned that, not to say that uh, it's not within the right of the people to protest, but you also need to ask several questions as to how much of resort this protest, you know, would yield. So... Are there other means that you can actually uh, try to correct the wrongs if you have all of the evidence? And you know everything is, <laughs> it has to be proven by court of competence, jurisdiction, and what have you. So yes, it's okay to say uh, this is what transpired. It's, it's, it's unfortunate. But uh, the people have not relented. And I mean, I saw the videos. I was thinking we could put up some of those videos where these women were actually... Uh, almost half dressed, I mean, naked in its real sense. And these are older, you know, uh, women in the society. Mm. But, um, yeah, it, it's quite interesting. I think um, uh, the situation in, in Abia State, in Enugu State, uh, in Adamawa State, and in Ogun State, um, we can now add Nasarawa State, uh, what we, we, uh, we, we, we're watching. Um, you know, you, 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 you expect people to, to come out and protest when they don't uh, trust the process. You know, in football, especially with those who are Arsenal fans, uh, we say trust the process. People don't trust the process anymore. And of course, they, you can, we can't uh, you know, uh, divulge the fact that there might be some protesters who come out to say, you know, if I can't lost, I'm still protesting. Uh, you know, instead of going to court. It's, it's, but I, I, I see it happen in different democracies around the world. They declare the person winner. You just know this one is going to protest and say he didn't win. You know, but um, uh, as long as a peaceful protest, you know, you know, for me, it's okay. There's nothing wrong. Um, people can protest and say we are, we are against it. It's part of democracy. But the thing about it is this. Um, in the case of Enugu, sorry, uh, Ogun State, the governorship candidate of uh, the PDP, um, uh, 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 wrote a petition to INEC, you know, asking for a recount or so some so some pause, you know, and uh, complaining about one of the elections results in a particular local government area, and um, he had no, he got no reply, and because of that, he had to go present another petition, seeking to force INEC to do what the electoral act says they should do, you know. Uh, I, I think parties are allowed, you know, at another count or some sort of remedy. Um, and then he went to the INEC headquarters and said he's yet to, to present a petition because the first one he wrote to them, they did nothing about it. And he was demanding that what happened in Nabia State and Enugu State where they, they suspended or canceled some results, um, suspended the collation rather, uh, should be done. In Nabia State, uh, uh, the, the um, thugs invaded a particular, um, what do you call it, a local government collation center seeking to scuttle that. It was clear that uh, some some of one of the governorship candidates was in the lead, you know, and they, they invaded the uh, uh, INEC collation center to try and scatter everything. And this is what they've been doing. So um, um, in, in the case of Ogun State, they said they want to present a petition. And the guy felt the best way to do that, since he had no reply from INEC, was to go with the crowd. And a lot of people were with him, and then to demand that um, they accept his petition. Despite the, the uh, confusion that ensued, because uh, this uh, trigger happy civil defense call uh, officer, you know, fired a shot into the air. He, well, the best way he thought to disperse the crowd. At the end of the day, I next still called the PDP candidate into the office and then they negotiated with him. The discussion. When he came out, he now told his supporters to go home and to remain peaceful, you know, which is so. So we just hope that, you know, people will. Um, uh, be given more confidence in the electoral process. You know, when people say go to court, go to court, I uh, mercy, the courts don't deliver justice. Unfortunately, um, that's what uh, people have become used to, that in political cases in particular, that's what I'm referring to, um, there are cases that give you uh, um, a, a cause to ask if the court is uh, hope of a common man. 
And we've seen very clear instances where the Electoral Act has been breached. We've seen clear instances of um, someone else winning an election and the court giving it to another person, you know, against the, the perceived will of the people, you know. So, so that's why people would say they want to embark on the But we'll leave it at that and move on to the next uh, trending story. We'll see. I think that it's not over with the elections. You know, I think that Nigerian judiciary will rise to the occasion to fix some of the anomalies you've seen. You know, in some states they've tried to, especially incumbent governors, have tried, they've tried to um, use the power of incumbency to drag an election. So let's see. Mm -hmm. We'll see a lot of court cases. We'll see a number of governors elected, uh, declared by NEC, being obtained by the courts. So mm -hmm. we'll yeah. no, fingers crossed. Let's see how all of that pans out. Now, uh, what's also trending uh, on our social media space, of course, what people are talking about on and off air, like I like to say, it's the issue of the United States. Uh, the United States is demanding the prosecution of perpetrators involved in electoral violence. And so they have expressed deep concern over the act of violence, uh, according to you know the reports, uh, violent voter intimidation and suppression that took place during the last Saturday governorship and state assembly elections in Lagos, Kanu, and other states in Nigeria. Uh, so in a statement that was released by the Public Affairs Section of the United States diplomatic mission in the FCT. The United States is quoted to say that the use of uh, ethnically charged uh, rhetorics before, during, and after the governorship elections in Lagos was particularly disturbing. And according to that statement, members of the US diplomatic missions have observed that the elections in Lagos and elsewhere and witnessed some of this incident firsthand. Uh, according to them, they say that they are calling on the government of Nigeria to hold accountable and bring to justice any individual found or individuals found to have ordered or carried out efforts to intimidate uh, voters and suppress voting during the election process. Uh, the United States it will also consider available actions, including additional visa restriction on individuals believed to be responsible for or complicit in undermining the democratic process in the country. Uh, however, they say that Nigeria carried out the second round of its electoral process, uh, talking about the governorship elections and state house of assembly elections, and they were really not uh, impressed with it. Now, uh, do you know, prior to the 18th of March elections, we also had February elections. Uh, I'm not sure if the thoughts are also the same. But these are the thoughts of the United States. And some people are raising valid questions as to, well, what does this really translate to anything? Does this really, really uh, yield any result whatsoever? Very, very interesting that the, the elections, the, the statement is on the US uh, embassy website. And, and um, it's, it's, a, it's a three or four paragraph statement. Um, and it's quite clear, you know, uh, the Nigerian, you know, media, we have a responsibility not to lie to, to, to Nigerians, not to insult the intelligence of Nigerians. Really, it's, um, it's offensive. I'm sorry I sound a bit hard, you know, but, you know, you, it's at this point in time, this critical point in time, where there are a lot of frayed nerves. The least that the media can do is to be honest and to be truthful and to be fair. And um, if you read the entire statement, it's just simply... Um, saying in the thesis of it is that they observed uh, um, uh, uh, violence and voter suppression and they're calling on those who committed it to be held accountable. Of course, in the opening statement, they commended, uh, uh, um, uh, you know, Nigerian political actors, religious and community leaders, youth and citizens, you know, but the statement is just basically a condemnation of the election. Now, while the newspaper um, or some newspapers now write a headline, INEC commends uh, uh, U.S. comments. U.S. Sorry, U.S. comments INEC. You know, it's just, you know, and it's... It's misleading. Misleading. I mean, look at the first paragraph. It says, Nigeria carried out the second round of its electoral process with gubernatorial and state uh, assembly elections March 18. The United States is deeply troubled by the disturbing acts of voter intimidation and suppression that took place during those polls in Lagos, Kano, and other states. Okay, that's the first sentence. The first um, 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 assessment they wrote there, that they are deeply troubled. And this, you know, English is a very beautiful language because there's a way you can put it for people to know that you are 
and uh, you, you're worried. You know, just like how the Catholic um, Archbishop of Lagos um, yesterday put out a statement and, you know, he said, he also said something, just one sentence, we showed it was, it was really, really worrying. Um, 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 you know, uh, Reverend, uh, uh, Most Reverend Adewale, but this is what he says. They said they're deeply troubled by the disturbing acts of violent voter, not just voter intimidation, violent voter intimidation and suppression that took place during those polls in Lagos, Kano, and other states. Okay? Um, it says members of the U.S. diplomatic mission observed the elections in Lagos and elsewhere and witnessed this in some of these incidents firsthand. They went out to observe and saw it with their koro koro eyes. Now, you both talk this one, oh. <laughs> eh? And it says the use of ethnically charged rhetoric before, during, and after the gubernatorial election in Lagos was particularly concerning. It says we commend all actors, youth citizens, who have chosen to reject and speak out against such violence and inflammatory language affirming Nigeria's commitment to and respect for democratic process. And you see, the president-elect yesterday put out a statement, which was you know, commented by some, but I think it's disturbing. Because the president-elect failed to mention the word Lagos, from, if, I, if I get it correct. He did not directly address the issues. And people are all over the place are saying they don't believe he's sincere when he says he's calling for healing. Because his, his, his foot soldiers were the ones who committed these acts of atrocities in Lagos. And his presidential campaign members are continuing to tell Igbos in Lagos to go back, that they don't belong in Lagos. They have no place in Lagos politics. That these are crimes. Hate speech and, and xenophobic comments are crimes. It's the APC government that introduced the law in Nigeria against hate speech, which some of us commended because hate speech is, it goes against all conventions, international conventions and local conventions and even moral codes and ethics known to man. I mean, hate it, speech. So the president-elect did not call out the problem as it were. And he's saying that he wants national language. I tell you what, a lot of people are rejecting it because they're saying that you are not sincere. And I like the, what I'm saying is I like the, for the Americans were specific. They talked about Lagos, Kano, and other states. And they, Particular about Lagos, the particular about Lagos, and see if you want you want peace, you have to start by, by by addressing the situation honestly. When you address the situation honestly, then people will come out and actually say, okay, you you've come out to actually call it as it is, and then we we believe address you. Address it. We believe you. Okay. So that that's that mercy, and um, I think they are the last the last paragraph is that they are also, I mean, I I, I they are also saying that. Um, they are calling on everybody who has an agreement to go through, you know, uh, the established legal processes, which is good, you know. And but they made a is a there's a, a caveat there. They're saying that these legal processes must not be interfered with. It is so sad that even the United States of America knows that our judiciary is harbors interference. I mean, the fact that we even it have so to sad. They, they have to even tell you that the judicial process must not be interfered with. What a shame. So, so I hope the Nigerian judiciary, sorry, I just to learn, will look at the fact that Amer if America is, is saying we know that, that politicians interfere with your process, and then sit up and say this time we refuse to, to allow ourselves to be interfered with. You know, so, so, so I mean, some of the things that you have raised as uh, a point of, you know, as a pointer to respond to the question or some of the things that we're talking about, the demands of or the consent of the United States, uh, it would actually also lead to another conversation. So, but it's also not interesting. It's saddening and very, um, for the lack of words now, to say it's, a, it's, it's just really shameful that we probably have to wait on the United States. I mean, for those, is, is it that we really don't understand that, you know, we had all of this in the electoral process, that this election was characterized by a lot. And how come we're asking for ju peace without justice? How can that be? Do we also need an external body? As a supreme nation, do we need the United States to you know, begin to tell us that, hey, those who have truncated the process should be arrested and should be made to face the wrath of the law because the law is very explicit about some of these issues. It's not rocket science. It's not anything that just fell from the sky. These things are already there. And so that's on the one hand. Then secondly, when you talked about the issue of, uh, you know, the president-elect asking for healing and not addressing certain issues as it should be. Head on. Head on. 
you also want to look at the co controversies or the conversations that are happening, whether or not the president-elect is in Nigeria, uh, if it's a certain cabal who's been, I mean, we constantly talk about the cabal or a set of people, uh, proxy, who are in control, who are speaking on behalf of the president-elect. And then, of course, um, he probably might not just be the one making this sentence or making this statement, however it is. So it, it, it's so much. But I think that for the sake of governance and for the sake of the people, the people that... Uh, we are called to, because that's the essence of governance, you are there because of the people, and the people have decided to get into a contract that they will do X, Y, Z, pay their taxes, obey the laws, and in turn you will protect them. Lives and properties, you will be there for everybody, not for a certain set of people or, you know, group of persons. But we need to move away, Kofi. Yeah. But, but just, just to add, you know, that um, you can see the, the difference between the Americans and the British, my, my friends. <laughs> where the British Commissioner, um, High Commissioner uh, Katrina, who is mm. also my friend as well, um, is said to have commended uh, the election process and commended Nigerians. And Aisha Isufu rejected it, came out on Twitter to say, I know she's partisan anyway, Aisha, but came out to say, uh, what are you commending? You know, and of course, uh, some Nigerians have also, uh, those who are, feel aggrieved, have pointed to the fact that the British Prime Minister was so quick to congratulate the president-elect, while Joe Biden has not congratulated the president-elect. You know that for me is neither here nor there. But but um, a, a point of note is that even the Americans are calling on Nigerian authorities to hold accountable and bring to justice any individuals found to have ordered and carried out efforts to intimidate voters and suppress voting during the election. Okay. Now, they are saying that if you, as a Nigerian government, do not do this, that they, as an American government, will consider all available actions, including visa restrictions, on individuals believed to be responsible or complicit in undermining democratic process in Nigeria. See, these guys, you don't mess with them. I love them. I love This is what you call government. You know, the, 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 um, the gentleman who was uh, picturing a video telling he was to stay at home and not come out of wood, he, he has an American passport. MC Olomo is said to be an American citizen, okay? Um, and then his kids are there. And you watch out, watch the Americans act. See, these guys they don't mean words. You know what I'm saying? We were here dilly dallying with some of these. Uh, uh, yeah, it was a joke. Yahoo, it wasn't boy, a joke. Yahoo boys and uh, fraudsters like um, uh, Hush Puppy. And when they come to Nigeria, they are hailed. America said, no, we, we want him, we want to prosecute. We're here dallying with Abakari, Abba right? Mm -hmm. um, the uh, super cop. All right? The Americans said, no, we want him, we want to prosecute him. So let's keep let's keep joking with these things, okay? Um, and, and people will never never accept any call for for healing because they don't feel that there's justice in the system. Mm. Okay, that's it. Let's move on to the next uh, uh, the next one very quickly. Um, the Nigeria Labour Congress uh, declaring nationwide strike. You know, regarding the the naira scarcity and and all that, um, they are said to have told their members to pick it. All the CBN, uh, all the CBN offices in in the country. Um, yesterday, Wednesday was when the Nigeria Labour Congress, which is the apex or the leading one of the two leading uh, labour unions in the country, uh, declared a nationwide strike over uh, cash scarcity in the country. We have a new national president, uh, Joe Ajero. He gave a directive during a media briefing in Abuja, also directing all the affiliate uh, unions of uh, the. Uh, uh, of the NLC to be on standby for picketing exercises across all branches of the Central Bank of Nigeria nationwide. Um, don't forget before now the NLC had issued a seven-day ultimatum to the federal government to end the petrol and cash scarcity uh, being experienced in the country. And they've said saying that uh, this industrial action has become a last resort because uh, the ultimatum they gave to the federal government had expired. Well, um, you know, the question on the lips of a lot of Nigerians is why now? Why is Ajero taking the decision now? What happened prior to this time? But he has stated clearly that there were other means and that has actually expired. But prior to this time, what was the, uh, you know, the Nigerian Labour Congress? Uh, what did they do? I mean, up until this moment, don't forget that the cash, the cash crunch actually started prior to you know, a match, we're already match. And so it's been like, uh, we've been grappling with petrol scarcity from November, December, what have you. And then you, you get into January, this cash 
uh, scarcity. I mean, there's a lot of economic downturn. The hardship is nothing to write home about. But several questions one would like to ask is, uh, what exactly is going on? So first we said uh, there's been a discrepancy with the ruling of the Supreme Court and then, you know, the directive from the Central Bank of Nigeria and the federal government or the president. Even when the president had said we needed 200 naira to be in circulation, how, many, how much of 200 naira did we see now? Even up until today, what 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 date is this again? Today is the uh, 23rd, 23rd, of 23rd March, of March. And we're March. still talking about non-availability of cash. And and so it, it calls for too many questions. Even the old cash. Even the old cash. I mean, it's not yeah. really available. And then you go, yeah. uh, you want to talk about the fact that we are saying, let's go cashless. And so online transactions. I know how many persons have been frustrated. Uh, even up until this time, several banks are planning to have outings. And I know that this Granted, customers of these banks will still go out. Of course, the CBN governor had apologized to Nigerians for, uh, you know, the failed transaction and the issues trying to use your mobile app and what have you. But does that sorry really change anything, really, in its real sense? Why is the cash not available? What exactly is going on? The elections are over. So we had, if the cash was kept away because we wanted to cop the issue of vote buying, now the elections are over. What exactly is going on? Why can people have access to their own money? Why don't we have seamlessness and smooth transaction uh, via mobile apps and what have you? People take your money, they debit you for months. I have, uh, you know, several debits and up until this moment I have to be visiting the bank every other time like I'm a jobless yeah, to, person to, 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 you know, to, to, to get crash. my cash and I'm asking so where exactly is this money? You take the money you don't credit, credit the other party so where exactly is the money? It's I think because of the um, the, the uh, surge in, in um in users on the internet platform. That means yeah. we're not ready. You yeah, know, no, so course. we're never ready for this. Yeah, but you know it, it's it's sad that the central bank governor who is basically meant to be uh, manager of the macroeconomy, you know, and looking at uh, macroeconomic policies, uh, monetary policies, has to now start talking about uh, uh, what do you call it, um, mobile apps of commercial banks, you know, you know, because so this is what the central bank has been reduced to. Um, well, the NLC have come out. A lot of people don't trust their motives because they've not proven over time that they are, they are always ready to act in the interest of Nigerians. Maybe when their workers are, have issues and, uh, you know, some payment of senior staff. And so, so let's see what happens. Um, the Supreme Court ruling, like I said uh, so some weeks ago, was neither here nor there. It won't change anything because it talked about using the old NARA uh, side by side in the new NARA. It never talked about um, uh, availability or the amount of money in circulation. Which that's a, the that's CBN, a technical. That's a yeah, technical thing you're raising. We, yeah, which is yeah, which is CBN, CBN actually its aim has been to mop up the cash in circulation. They've not released excess cash into the, the system, and it's just a mockery of the whole thing. The mockery of the whole thing is that the naira is struggling against the U.S. dollar. It's, it's struggling. It's, you know, um, inflation is 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 increasing. Maybe in the next months we shall see a reduction. I don't know. But right now, inflation is increasing. Um, now, so and they're increasing interest rates. You know, trying everything possible. But you see, someone said that the fiscal and the monetary aspects of government arms are going to need to work in tandem. You know, when government is spending, when government is borrowing, when government is not prudent, when when people are you know being frigglet. Uh, what's happening to me? Sorry. <laughs> and, you know, there is no probity, accountability, and control, you know, and if on the financial aspect of things. What you do on the monetary aspect of things may not yield results. So we're just um, uh, deceiving ourselves and trying to just move. See, this country is only surviving by the grace of God and through the hard work and, you know, uh, perseverance of the normal Nigerians out there. Not because of government policies. So let's continue. You know, when it comes to policies, forget about these guys. They have nothing to offer. <laughs> just keep doing your work. Think about your family and work hard and just to survive and to make it. It, it just reminds yeah, so. me of the very street parlance, uh, the street word. They say they play. Just they play. Right now, because that they, is because, what it's because really. They play. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they play. Continue they play. Ah, they play. That's where we are. You know, Nigerians are, uh, is, are surviving and even maybe thriving in some sectors, not because of government policies. They're thriving in spite of government. Because government will actually put blocks. Look at look at look at this Central Bank of Nigeria, that 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 harassed, and government that harassed the the fintech space and these crypto guys. Now politicians are, are making campaign videos saying that if you elect them, they no, want the, to the, promote the, 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 the 
But when they harass, they block the accounts, they please. See, guys, just forget about them. Government can't improve your life. <laughs> just no, try and do you the know, best Kofi, Kofi, I think that a, li a little bit of hope, you know, would just be there. But, but you see, that's why every yeah. other time, just as we coast it down, I, I think that, I for don't now, think, Nigerians now. are resilient people. Nigerians are... I, I used to think that every Nigerian should be on salary. Like, you, you should just be getting some allowance just because you're a Nigerian. Because, you know, in the midst of all of this, we go through, we survive, we, we thrive, we continue to push. We even saw that the elections, people still came out despite the pains and the challenges and everything. People still came out to cast their votes. And what, what, other, what other energy do you need on planet Earth? Uh, rather than asking for good leadership just to provide the basic I, things. I remember, so every other I time, yes. you know, it just breaks me that the basic things Before of life go, I remember the woman who gave birth at an ATM point in Port Harcourt. This one is not somebody I know saw it. You know, government put stumbling blocks on the roads of Nigeria. You're trying to get to this point from this, my mug here, to that your beautiful mug, okay? And government will put a stumbling block. You, you jump it going we, we, don't, we don't even want to go through policies. I've, when, lost, I've lost a colleague because yes. of government policy. You see, when, when in other countries, government will build a bridge for you to get from here to here. So I'm saying, saying people, leave Central Bank alone and just, just read nothing. For now, for now, it's, it's just a, a really appalling. You know, you have a policy and nothing is getting better. You can't even see that you've missed it. You know, today you start something, you change it, the next day, bring it. I don't know. They say it's because of politics and uh, if we don't want to fight, fight vote buying. <laughs> well, we, we need to, that's the size of it this morning on the top trending. We'll definitely, uh, you know, return with more interesting lineup. And when we come back, Zika Yai took all things Vinicor will be joining us for Off the Press. Please stay with us. Good morning.